As Viking 1 eased into its orbit, an onboard camera began scanning potential landing sites. Beamed back to Earth, the images were studied by Martin and his team, and a favorable location was chosen, near ancient outflow channels in a low plain known as Christ Planitia. On July 20th, around 2 a.m., at JPL, where the team was assembled, Viking 1's lander separated from the orbiter and began its hazardous descent to the surface. Plunging through the thin Martian atmosphere at nearly 10,000 miles per hour, the lander was protected by a heat-shielding aeroshell. At around 19,000 feet, a large parachute was deployed, slowing the hurtling spacecraft. At 4,000 feet, the parachute and aeroshell were released. Rockets fired, further slowing the lander's descent to just six miles per hour. For 19 agonizing minutes, the time it takes a radio signal to travel to Earth from Mars, the Viking team held their collective breath and waited for confirmation that the lander was down safely and functioning. We knew that the guidance system was working, that the radar was working, but there is a period of 19 minutes when we didn't know had the lander crashed or had it land successfully. And that was nail-biting. The president called at that time, and Jim Martin said, go away, I'm trying to land the spacecraft. Come back and call me later. <laughs> Viking once lander had made it. I remember cheering in my little control room office, along with several other people, and high fives and handshakes and hugs. It was uh, amazing. The excitement was, um, you know, was overwhelming. People were hugging each other and jumping up and down and uh, uh, doing all those things that you do when just, uh, you know, an extraordinary event has uh, has taken place. Immediately after touchdown, the lander's camera took its first picture and relayed the historic image back to Earth. We took a, a picture of its own foot to see how far it had sunk into the surface. Turns out it was very reasonable, good picture, and shows a foot landed on the surface of Mars. It was very nice. We couldn't have asked for anything better because that, that picture, uh, you know, it really was worth a thousand words. A job very well done. Outstanding, great navigation, perfect. I'm assuming that we must be sitting right on the X. I mean, it was an awesome engineering feat, but the science was yet to be done. So uh, while the landing was, was such a, uh, an exciting uh, event, I think we all recognized that uh, at that point the search began. The Viking team repeated this gut-wrenching process with Viking 2 which on September 3rd, 1976, also settled solidly on Martian soil. Over the following years, the two Viking spacecraft conducted experiments studying atmospheric and soil composition, meteorology, and seismology, and provided a catalog of more than 65,000 images from the surface and from orbit. But the principal reason for the mission was to look for evidence of life. We went to look for biology, because the big question then was, was there ever life on Mars? It's still the big question. Are we alone, or are there other living things out there, or might there have been other living things out there sometime in the past? The landers dug soil samples from the frozen surface and looked for signs of respiration, an indication of biological activity. Though the initial results were thought promising, Viking found no conclusive signs of life. But the spacecraft, originally designed to function for 90 days, continued collecting data for nearly six and a half years. And in that time, the Mars textbook was rewritten. We learned a lot about biology. We learned a lot about the climate of Mars. We learned a lot about the uh, pressure of the atmosphere on Mars, winds, storms. As you pattern these things all together, including the images, you could create a model of Mars 
that starts to support the decisions that we're facing today. The mission ended in 1982, but the Viking data proved timeless. 25 years later, there are scientists, young scientists out there still playing with the data, still trying to understand it, still, still trying to map and understand what is this thing called Mars. We have all the technology available from Viking, so we can use that as a stepping stone to actually expand the technology and be able to get to the next step the scientists want to get to to find uh, if there has been life on Mars. 2001 Mars Odyssey was launched in early April. The Mars Exploration Rover mission, due for launch in 2003. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, planned for launch in 2005. The Mars Smart Lander proposed for a 2007 liftoff. And a Mars Sample Return Mission. All are built on the Viking legacy. It's very exciting to me as well as to the whole team of folks here at Langley to be carrying on in the Viking tradition to explore Mars. And while the Viking tradition is celebrated, this 25th anniversary also reminds us of friends and colleagues who are no longer with us. There's anybody who uh, uh, should be memorialized with the Viking 25th anniversary is Jerry Salting. He was Mr. Mars. He was an enthusiastic, creative, successful scientist. I'm sorry he's not here to share the 25th anniversary because this was Jerry's mission. As it did for the Viking mission team 25 years ago, Mars continues to hold a special fascination for us today. Thanks to the dedication of men and women at the Langley Research Center and other NASA centers across the country, the mysterious Mars of our past is becoming a much more familiar place. The fact that all four spacecraft work, the two landers and two orbiters, was a tribute to our deep, paying attention to detail, the design of this day back, the science of Jerry Soffin, the leadership of Jim Martin, and the operations capabilities of Tom Young. And I think all of us that were involved look back with extraordinary pride. And, uh, and um, you know, I think we can say we did it. Perhaps in the not too distant future, a mission will be undertaken to establish a human presence on Mars. And that next generation of Mars explorers will know that their trail was blazed by Vikings.